First of all, thank you all for being here. Everybody from home, I appreciate your all's outlets letting you letting you be here and reporting back home. So appreciate that first. Um, complete game. I thought it was dominant. I've got a ton of respect for for Mike Gundy and what they've done from a program perspective. And I'm not sure how many times I've been here, um, but the last two we've came in here and been able to win, and those those, those are special wins. Uh, and today was special. I thought our preparation, staff-wise, player-wise, mentally, physically, emotionally, I thought our guys were ready to go. I was really proud of how we handled the bye week. Uh, we asked them to go three days, and they went, and then we gave them some downtime, and they needed it. And, and sometimes time away is real positive. Um, but we were ready to go today. And, and all I asked this team is, man, we're focusing week to week. I think we talked about in a press conference on Monday is just go 1-0 and and just compete on every single play. Just compete. And, and that's all we can ask for. And I thought across the board, man, we competed today. And going into it, Tony and I talked about it for a long time on the radio on Thursday night. The keys were going to be who can run the football better, who can establish it, and then who can score points in the red zone, preferably touchdowns in the red zone. And if you look at it, obviously we won the, the, the rushing game uh, big. And, and then in the red zone, we didn't score as, as touchdowns every time, but uh, we were 6-7. of seven, And the, ones, the one that we didn't get was the, the kneel down there at the end of the game. So, um, you know, starting on defense, you know, I thought P and 10 was huge. You know, that's what – and that's the first drive of, this, of the series. Um, and when they've, we've, when they've had success versus us um, – Across the years, that's that's where they've had success. And then, when you get into short, second and short, it's it, they they can do either, you know. And so we got them behind the chains early. I thought we did a good job, the best we've done all year, getting off the field. Um, and and we got them in some third and longs, which is always helpful. And then, you know, I know Oklahoma State's fans are going to talk about Ollie Gordon. Like that dude's a player, man. Like he's a player. And uh, for us to hold him to to that yards, I think says a lot about just the will of our guys. Uh, and then offensively, man, we talked about, you know, we have not ran the ball up until today, like I think how we're capable of. Um, and it's really a team approach. When you do as much in the run game as we do, um, and the perimeter and all that kind of stuff, and the quarterback run game and the things we do, it, it's really an all 11. The quarterback's a factor. Um, our running back, especially C.J. Donaldson, we asked him to block quite a bit today. Our tight ends, this is the best they've played. Uh, Cole Taylor, you know, he wasn't targeted like we normally do. Um, but, man, he blocked really good on the perimeter, and our receivers were huge factors. When you go back and watch the TV copy of this, you're going to see our receivers at the point of attack. And so to come in here and run for 389 is special. You know, this will be something that we remember. Uh, and we were really good on third down. And so we had some injuries. Um, I'll give you more of an update on that. Garrett went out um, and wanted to make sure that he was 100% before we put him back in the game. Credit Nico. Uh, I've said this really going back to the spring that I felt like we had two quarterbacks that were capable of winning in the Big 12. I think we showed that today. Um, and we had a lot of guys that, that got injured in the secondary. We played, you know, there was KK, Israel Boys. We had a bunch of guys that played in the secondary because of some injuries. I'll have an update on those on Monday. I don't have an update right now. And so Greg starts off. You go back to defense for a little bit. Uh, what concentration would you guys want to focus on coming in? Because obviously you shut down their run game. Mm -hmm. You say that's going to be our first focus. What, what was it defensively you wanted to Well, it, I think it's been a process, you know, since the pit game of simplifying and, and figuring out who we are and what can we do well and then how can we do those things but still um, disguise coverages, uh, move our front to confuse the defense, and that's what we've done. Uh, today, like our first order of business, and, and you can go back and watch the press conference on Monday, I said this, and I said this in the radio show on Thursday, is we, we were coming in here to stop the run. Like we had to stop the run. And they were throwing for 300 plus yards. And they may have, they, if they did that today against us, I wasn't going to be overly concerned, but I wanted to make them one dimensional and, and stop the run. And we did that. And then from a coverage structure, we were, we were better on our drop zones, um, and we're getting better at that. Um, we got to continue to work on it. They still got in there, especially when some of our young guys were in the game in the second half. Um, but that's been kind of the evolution defensively. And I'm, I'm proud of our staff. You know, like you go through hard times and, and they got beat up. And, and I told them, like, we, I've been there before in my career and you just got to put your head down and go to work. And if you work and your guys are going to feed off of you and the belief and, and how you coach them, they're going to follow. And that's what's happened over the last couple of weeks. Feeding that message, obviously, to your team all week about stopping the run. They come out and I think Ollie gets the ball. First four plays yeah. or first five plays, something like that. When you stop that, 
is that just like the ultimate reinforcement you tell your new guys, hey, here we go, we, this is what we wanted to do? Well, we felt like coming into the game, because uh, they ran the ball early against Kansas State and did a nice job. So we felt like coming into the game that they were going to try to give him the ball. And we felt like they were going to run it and play with tempo. And they did both early. I think the first handoff of the game he had a pretty good. And then we got him on that second and third down. He barely got the third down. Um, but that was, that was I think, very very big confidence builder. And for us to score, you know, people ask me, well, why do we take the ball all the time? And, and I was telling our team the other day, the reason we take our, the ball is because if you do that over the course of a year, you're going to get more possessions. And so that's why we take the ball. A lot of teams defer. We take it because I think, you know, the more possessions you got, the, the more opportunity to score. Um, and also, I feel like on the road, if you can get if you can get ahead, then man, you really take the crowd out of it just a little bit. Um, and the crowd is a factor here because the noise stays in. But we were able to get that field goal, like to score a touchdown. But we were able to get that field goal, and then we got that stop, okay, on the second set of downs, and then we were able to go score a touchdown. And, and I thought that was critical in, in how the game unfolded. Neil, as much as you rep it and prepare him for it, how tough is it for Nico to come in and make that throw that he did on the third play that he came in? Yeah. So what I've told him is when he played last year, we couldn't we couldn't call the game um, just like when Garrett was in. We couldn't do that. And, and part of that was he wasn't completely ready, and part of that is we didn't have a third. Um, so now we have a third that we feel really good at, about in Ryder Burton, and he's matured, and he's kept getting better, guys. Like, I know, like, I say that, and y'all are like, ah, whatever. But, like, he's gotten a lot better, and, like, he's capable of winning games right now. And so – um, as soon as as soon as Garrett was down, I was able, you know, like I knew he was going to be out for a little bit. And I told Nico, I was like, hey, the same thing I told you on Thursday is how we're going to handle this. We're going to call the game just like you're in, or just like Garrett was in. You know the plan. Um, we were intentional during the week of getting him reps. And so we have a lot of faith in him. And he came in through a strike, you know, and that was a third and goal. Uh, they were in, uh, they dropped back, and Traylon Ray ran a great route. Not a good route, a great route, and he put it right on him. So proud of both of those guys. Talk Talk up, go ahead. You talked on Monday about carrying the confidence over from the Kansas win. How does winning here on the road just continue to build that confidence? In your team? Yeah, I don't think the, the confidence was ever shaken other than just some things in our pass coverage. Um, you know, offensively, we may be overconfident sometimes. Um, and so really, to me, it was the resiliency and then how we competed in the second half versus Kansas. That's what we had to carry over. I don't necessarily worry about the confidence of the group. I think the confidence of the group is always a direct reflection of how you handle yourself as, from a head coaching perspective, coordinator, et cetera, all the way down the line in the organization. So they're a confident group, but it was really taking that resiliency and that toughness that we played with in the second half and how we competed, and we were able to do that. Your thoughts of your offensive line. Obviously, the skill guys did well, but yeah, that, we were really good. Yeah, we were really good. Best we played. You know, I think it starts with Brandon Yates. You know, he's the one that directs traffic up there, um, and I thought he he did a really nice job. It, it's a lot easier to evaluate those guys being on the field when I watch it on tape. So when I get on the plane and I watch it, I'll be able to have a better answer for you on Monday. But my assumption was, Greg, no, I'm not assuming can do. You know, they say <laughs> my my one of my high school coaches used to tell me this. Don't assume, and I can define that for you. But my assumption would be that if you run for 389 yards, your O-line played pretty well. You know, that would be my assumption. Inside zone? We ran, well, we mixed it up. Yeah, we mixed it up. We, were, we ran a bunch of counter today. We ran a bunch of inside zone. We got on the edge on some, on some uh, power read stuff. We, make, we tried to keep them off balance, really. Talk about depth on the offensive line. I know Yates went down there and Livingston came in and performed like – you the guys behind the starting We are. Defense. Yeah, you know, that it's building depth on the O line is so hard. And I think when when you establish yourself as a program, and what I mean that is is when you've recruited and you've had time to develop your roster, it really shows on your O O L D L. And so on the defensive line we've been over overcome an injury to Eddie V, and who's one of our, our starter, one of our better players, one of our leaders on our team. We've been able to overcome that because our development program, when I say development, man, I'm talking athletic training, strength conditioning, nutrition, all these pouring into these young guys. And it's the same way on the offensive front. You know, so Landon Livingston, who played today, Johnny Williams, who's played two games, a, a, a good bit of snaps, Sully Weedman, who's played a good bit of snaps. You know, when those guys come in, and I could go on, um, when those guys come, come in, they're prepared, you know, because they've redshirted, you know, they've played a lot of football, they understand schematically what we're trying to do. 
Um, and it helps too if you look at it. We got three guys that work with the offensive line, and it's one of the real benefits. Uh, and we got three guys that work with our defensive line, and it's one of the real benefits to the new rule where you can have more guys coach because we're able to do meetings two different times. The developmental guys are in one meeting, the older guys are in one meeting. We stay after and do some fundamentals and some scrimmaging stuff um, with those guys so they continue to get reps and they're getting coached on those reps, and it shows when they get opportunities. Seems like it didn't even have that explosion back. That Really well, had this year as much. yeah. Well, and it's 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 been as much about us getting him the ball in the right situation. Uh, so first, I, I take ownership of that, and that's what I told him. I, I I can't remember what day that he and I spent some time together during the bye week. I just told him. I said, "Listen, man, like I I take complete ownership is from a touch perspective and how we're getting you the ball at the certain parts of the field. We got to do a better job, you know. And like he's a he's not a good player. He's a great player. Like he and um, if this would have been a different game, like we plan to throw it to him several times too. Um, but once you get up and we're having the success in the run game, and I just told the receivers and, and Cole after the game, I was like, hey, listen, guys, like I want you all to enjoy this. Your stats aren't going to be what you want them to be. Um, but there's going to be games where we're going to have to throw it for 300, and you're going to have multiple touches. It just wasn't one of those games. And the, and the number one thing is to win, you know. And, and so um, – but Jaheim, getting back to, to him, I think he's a great player. Um, he showed that. He was a tough tackle today. You know, and, and CJ, I thought CJ did a nice job. He had some tough runs, um, but Jaheim really made people miss in space. Garrett obviously gets a lot of credit for his scrambling ability, but it seems like he's really blossomed on the quarterback leads and the draw of following mm -hmm. the center and hey. playing off that block. Is that? It's been a process. Is it? It's been a process, but he's a, he's, a, he's a good runner. Nico's a good runner, too. Nico had some really good runs there while Garrett was out. Um, now, I don't know about the slide. <laughs> That's bad ball. Bad ball. But in developing that, though, is that you know, it's something that just some people have and other people have to work no, with? No, yeah, it, like it, really it does. He is uh, – so Garrett and I could go on. This could be a long talk, so I'm not. I'm going to keep it short. But Garrett's evolution is just as a football player, uh, from the time that I first met him at 15 to now, is tremendous. You know, as far as just overall understanding. Um, you know, early in his career, just running, he didn't really understand the scheme. Now he actually understands the scheme. Like he can draw it up on a board for you. He can tell you where it's supposed to hit. And so having that knowledge of where the ball's supposed to hit and where your kick, kick out blocks come from. All those things, you know, that's what made him better. You know, Nico's still in that process. Like, we caught a run going down to the closed end um, by their students, and he should have easily walked in, and he kept it outside. That's going to continue to grow for him. You know, he's probably um, – he he's a more north and south, but he's a real tough tackle too. Like, he, he ran over a safety today. Um, but he's got to get some of that understanding, the schematics of it, and he will. He will. He'll get better at it. So, momentum – doesn't yeah. necessarily carry over. To I wish game. it did. Yeah. I w yeah. How much momentum does this give you now? No, I, I think that you know this league's really hard, and each week's a new challenge. And so what you have to do is like you want to celebrate it. You know, I think sometimes um, you know we don't take enough in this profession to really celebrate. Like this is a really big deal. We came into a tough venue versus a program that's won 10, 10 games a lot of times against a head coach that's going to be in the, the Hall of Fame at some point. And we played a complete game. And so that's a big deal. So we want to enjoy that. You know, we enjoy the plane ride home. We want to watch the game tomorrow. And then when we flip it over to Iowa State, like I know that's a huge challenge. You know, and it's going to be completely different. You know, they got the best defense in our league, right? Um, they ran the ball effective. You know, I watched them during the bye week. And so um, I know who they are. I know what they're about. I'm not starting from scratch tomorrow. Um, I've got a lot of respect for what they do and, and how Matt's done it there. Um, but we need to enjoy this. And then this league, man, it's – y'all are seeing it. Y'all are seeing it how it is. Every week you have an opportunity to win, but you also have an opportunity to lose. And it's not being the better team overall. It's being the better team that day. And that's what we've got to get prepared for. We've got to get healthy, too. We've got to get our guys healthy. Okay. Thank you very much, right. Coach. Thanks, Coach.